Well, it started off uh, back in kind of middle of 2004. Um, there was a lot going on online. There was uh, some pretty cool new websites uh, that were emerging and starting to take off. Um, I was a big fan of Delicious, which was uh, social bookmarking. Um, I was also a fan of uh, Friendster, which is obviously one of the big first social networking sites. Um, and also Slashdot, which was uh, a really hardcore uh, tech news site that was all user-submitted content. Um, the difference being is that it was user submitted, but it was still a handful of editors that would choose which stories made the front page. So it was kind of seeing all these things come together and the different ways that people were opening up and, and kind of uh, different levels of transparency that were starting to happen as far as what I'm doing online and what I want to share with people that, uh, you know, all kind of was going around in my head and said, hey, we should apply this, this to news and just see what happens. So essentially, um, every single registered user on Dig access an editor to the site. So um, these people are going out finding news stories, finding videos, images, uh, things that they th find of value that they want to share with the masses. Um, you come to the site, you submit a story, you give it your own title and description, assign it a category in which you think it uh, falls under. Um, and once you do that, uh, the story goes into like our upcoming area. And the upcoming area is not on the front page, but it's like the second page of content where all the stories live, and people dig through those stories, find their favorite ones, uh, click the Dig It button, add one to the overall count, the overall number of digs on a story, and um, once there's enough kind of critical mass around a story, that story is promoted to the front page for everyone to see. So um, that happens all day long. We have about 130 or so stories per day that are promoted to the front page. And um, that's how content is exposed to that large, you know, 26 million unique visitors per month audience. The algorithm is, is very, very complex. Um, it's something that we've been evolving over time. I mean, initially when we launched the site, it was, uh, you know, like a fixed number of digs. And then we added this really kind of wonky uh, karma system that worked well for a while, but then a lot of people tried to game it. Um, and now there's just a bunch of different factors that go in there that uh, really look and determine, they look at the, the digs around the story and say, okay, does this story have a unique, diverse pool of people digging it? Um, and once we determine that, and once we say, okay, yes, it does, then we can push it to the front page. But um, we had a, hired a couple, you know, math PhDs to kind of tackle this problem and deal with uh, all the incoming types of spam and people trying to to attack and, and get the you know free stories on the front page. The berry function is the same thing as a dig, except it's just the you know the opposite. In that, uh, if you don't like a story or you think that it's uh, it, it shouldn't belong on the front page, you can just simply click bury it. And once again, the same thing. We see that critical mass of users um, that is diverse. Then then we will remove it. Um, you know, if you went and created 300 accounts right now and all buried the same story, nothing's going to happen. Like we have, there, there's a lot of kind of behind the scenes uh, factors that we take into account to make sure that people aren't using, uh, abusing the powers, um, both on the digging and burying side. The front page of Dig has been this uh, evolution of kind of different types of content depending on what's going on. Obviously, obviously the election season has really uh, pumped up the politics. Um, but we had, you know, an all tech front page, then we launched videos and videos was dominating for a while. And then, um, you know, now politics is obviously a huge number of stories on the front page with everything that's going on. Um, so to, to, for all these people that, that, I mean, one of the things that was very important to me is every step of the way I wanted to offer tools to allow the user to customize their own experience on Dig. So you can go into Dig today and say, okay, I don't care about politics and I don't want anything to do with celebrity gossip and uncheck those boxes, click save, and you'll get just that version of the home page for you. Um, in the future, we'll be, uh, you know, allowing people to um, customize the home page in different ways, saying that uh, uh, I'm starting to get into product stuff um, that we haven't launched yet, which is when I get phone calls from our PR agency being like, you talked about what? Um, but we, we will customize the home page even further so that, uh, that we're getting smarter about understanding and learning from, based on what you dig, what you're into. And so we'll be giving you dials and knobs and fun things to play around with uh, how you can adjust the flow. 
So um, Revision 3 started right around the same time as Dig. It was just a couple months after uh, I had created Dig. And the reason was that I, we were all working in traditional television for quite some time. Um, I was hosting a, a television show called The Screensavers on Tech TV. And um, I just felt as though uh, we were kind of, it was, it was cool in that we could do really fun tech content for television, but we were limited to the number of minutes that a segment could be, and it was live television, so um, if a segment was kind of running long, others would get cut. And we really didn't have the, the, the platform to deliver kind of the in-depth technical uh, content that we wanted to, to really share with people. Um, so we thought, hey, if we do this on the web, we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Um, you know, this is something that we can create, and if we want to show it to be 20 minutes or we want to show it to be an hour and a half, it's up to us. Um, so really, we started experimenting around, uh, experimenting around with some long-form uh, content for the web. Um, we created a show called System, which is, uh, you know, uh, really did a deep dive on a lot of stuff that we just glossed over on, on, on Tech TV. And um, it just started taking off from there, and we launched other shows around that whole kind of geek culture um, um, type of programming. Um, and then Pounce was, was just an idea that we had while we, uh, when I was working at Dig with, uh, with Daniel Burka, who is the head designer at Dig. And uh, we had a really hard time sharing files with each other, and we were getting some of those firewall connection issues that you get. And you're like, I'm sitting right next to you. Why can I not use AIM or something else to like, you know, send a file to someone? Um, so we wanted to to really fill the gap where email broke down and where IM was having issues. And so we created a way, a platform in which you could blast uh, media to the masses, to your friends, and have a conversation around that media. When launching the site, um, obviously it was a very small, tight, niche group of people that initially kicked things off. So we're talking, you know, a couple hundred users, everyone knew everyone else. Um, you know, there was, uh, it was very easy to, to kind of communicate and answer all the emails and like it was, it was just a, a really fun time. And then obviously we started growing and becoming bigger and bigger and as with every community site, you run into issues. You know, when you get uh, too many kids uh, in the sandbox, you know, things start breaking down. And so um, for us it was really um, listening to the, the feedback from the community and building tools to help them manage what's going on on the site. Um, you know, we never really wanted to have a heavy hand in kind of uh, the management of, of dig stories. Um, and so we added tools to help users remove stories from the site, such as burying stories. Um, and we later added things like dig meetups where we'd have the community get together and talk about issues on the site. Um, we do these live kind of town hall meetings now where we'll broadcast out. We'll, have, uh, we'll actually submit a story to dig and say, dig up your favorite comments and your favorite qu questions that you want to ask us. And so globally, it gives our entire community um, one story which they can say, okay, this is an important issue to me. This is something I think that Dig should address. And then we can go back and, and answer those questions. So, um, I mean, we're still learning. I, I, I can't really say that we've gotten it right yet. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't think you can, ever can get it right when you're dealing with like 26 million users a month. There's always going to be someone that doesn't quite, you know, isn't quite happy. But you just do your best and you take in feedback and evolve. Dig will eventually become more of a, of a verb in that it will be an action that people take to spread content to the people they care about. Um, you know, right now we have people that come to Dig and define, you know, their group of friends within the Dig system, their own little social network inside of Dig. And when they dig something, you know, their friends uh, will get uh, an up updated, like, friends feed within Dig. So they can say, okay, my friend thought this, you know, story about Hillary Clinton or Obama or McCain or whatever it was really interesting and I should check it out and also read it. So they use that as a way to come and, and get together and share news with each other. Um, you know, th these are very early days for us when it comes to that type of functionality. I mean, we have integration. Uh, we had an announcement with Facebook where they came out with a feature here about uh, uh, three months ago or so, two or three months ago, that essentially allows um, any Facebook user to import their dig stories directly into the news feed. So now as I'm digging around and finding stories I like, um, those stories are, are published without the use of a Facebook application um, to my mini feed in Facebook and then pushed out to that main global news feed for all my friends to consume. And so that is like I use Facebook as my fully defined social graph in which I want to uh, spread and share stories to. Um, so in the future, you know, you'll see integrations with all these different sites so that for me, um, you know, if 
I'll be happy if you know a year, year and a half, two years from now, I'm on a website and I see an article I like, and it's just a no-brainer. You see that dig button, and you think, okay, I don't have to go to dig. I can just click it right there. The number's going to go up. I'll stay on this site. I'll stay in this ex this experience. But I'll know by doing that, not only am I saying this is something I'm into, this is something I care about, this is something I want to promote to the masses, but I'm also saying that this is something I want to share and spread to my friends and people that I care about. So um, it'll just be a function of saying, I like this and I want other people uh, to know about it. And if we can achieve that, that's, that's extremely powerful. There are networks that were created to help limit what you want to share. I mean, if you take a look the way we've developed Pounce, um, Pounce is very much a, a kind of a closed network by default. So it's just your group of friends that you're sharing media with. And I can say, I can create sets with inside of Pounce. So I can say, like, okay, here's a YouTube video or here's a video that I don't want to share with uh, my mom, but, you know, my buddies might really enjoy this. And so I can say, okay, go send to buddies, and boom, it just spreads out that way. So I think you'll see certain controls in there, um, without a doubt. I mean, uh, but as far as what we've created, uh, on DIG, it's, it's been all about being open and saying this is something I care about and, and want to share globally. But, you know, we've had, I think that there's a huge feature request. We've said, we've had people saying, like, I want to make this a private DIG. And it's something that, you know, Delicious allows you to have private bookmarks. And uh, this is just, they're, they're features that we have stacked up that are over here that we'd, we'd love to get to. It's just, um, you know, we have uh, important things like scaling the website and making sure we don't fall over due to traffic that, that we'll probably tackle first.